Welcome back to another episode of The Road Shows Me. My name's Dan Grek, and on today's episode, I'm gonna run through five little tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way while driving around the world that I think are really good habits to get into on a day-to-day -day basis. So these are about making sure your vehicle keeps running well because vehicle preservation is so important. This is to make sure none of your gear disappears and make sure that you can enjoy your trip as much as possible. So these are little things that I, some of them figured out for myself and other ones I picked up from other overlanders that have way more experience than I do. So five little things to make sure your trip runs smoothly. The first little tip that I picked up from my German friends who've driven most of the way around the world is in the morning when you're starting your vehicle, make sure you've got your window down. That way you can hear the engine as it starts up and you might hear some strange noises or something that doesn't sound quite right. If you've already got the windows up, if you've got music on, you're probably not gonna concentrate too much to the engine. So my advice, put your window down and start the engine and concentrate for 10 seconds. Do you hear any strange rattles? Do you hear an odd noise you've never heard before? Let it warm up for a little bit and then slowly start moving forward, gently and smoothly. And again, listen, do you hear any funny ticking noises as all of the drivetrain starts moving? Maybe you hear a rock in the brakes. Anything that you've never heard before, any vibration, have a little bit of a concentrate and try to analyze your vehicle. This is just gonna help alleviate or catch early problems before they develop into major problems. Another really good tip that I was given is to do a daily walk around of your vehicle. And for me, this habit developed while I was brushing my teeth in the morning. So, you know, you've got three minutes to brush your teeth. You're probably not doing too much else. I like to walk a lap around my vehicle and have a look at everything. Even if I just kick the tires, crouch down, have a look at whatever parts of the suspension I can see, have a look, is there any fluid underneath the vehicle that shouldn't be there? You know, maybe even grab onto some of the suspension and give it a little bit of a shake. It's just sort of a good way to stay in tune and to keep checking up if there's anything going on with the vehicle that you're a little bit surprised about. And this did catch a few things for me. When I was up in Alaska, the sun was up for 22 hours a day, so I hadn't been using my headlights at all. And then actually on one of my morning walkarounds, I discovered one of my headlights had been completely smashed by a rock. There was actually a hole right through the headlight. And I didn't even know that. I don't know, I guess I'd done a morning walk around maybe a couple of days before that, I can't really remember. So I discovered this problem. I thought, wow, I better really fix that. Another time when I was in Africa, I'd been driving actually into the evening, which is a bad idea. And I drove through kind of a huge big cloud of like grasshoppers or locusts. And so in the morning when I did my walk around, I discovered that my grill mesh in front of the radiator was severely covered in these dead locusts and grasshoppers. So it was severely blocking airflow. So I spent 10 minutes and I scraped it all out of there. Had I just started driving in the heat of the day, I don't know how much that would have compromised airflow to the radiator. But anyway, the whole point is walk around your vehicle every morning and just have a good look around, double check that everything looks sane and looks normal. And again, it's gonna help you pick up minor problems before they develop into major ones. The next tip is something that I've discovered that really helps me keep my sanity. And that is keeping all of the doors closed when you don't need them to be open. And so this is like when I'm at camp, when I'm cooking in the kitchen, if I'm sitting here reading a book or something, I wanna make sure that all the doors way over there are closed. And it's not like this Jeep is a huge vehicle, but it's big enough that if you're here and the front passenger door is open, you can't really see it and you can't really know that. And this comes up all the time in my build because I often walk around the outside of the Jeep to open the rear passenger door to get to my fridge. I can crawl through from the inside, but if I'm getting lots of things, it's easier to go around the outside. So you open the rear passenger door, get what you want out of the fridge. Then if you walk back over here with all the things, you immediately are concentrating on those things. You start cutting up vegetables or whatever you're going to do. That rear passenger door might stay open for hours, who even knows? And it's unfortunate, but if you look at the iOverlander comments, pretty much every single campground in Latin America and all the way around Africa, 
there's going to be a comment in there from someone who had something stolen even though they were in a paid campground. So if you leave doors open, sooner or later, something is going to get stolen. So personally, it just makes me feel happy and more confident, yes, that door is closed. Because it even comes up too, you kind of forget that door might be open for so long, you end up going to take a shower or you get distracted because there's an elephant on the other side of the campground. Yes, that happens. So you wander off to go and investigate that, you've totally forgotten you've left that door open. So I try really hard to always close the doors that I'm not using. And often too, I lock the Jeep because it gives me peace of mind. I always have the keys in my pocket. So it's not hard at all to just single tap on the button and all the doors are immediately locked. And I can do that even when the back's open like this so that I can be here cooking or whatever, but I know nobody can kind of sneak over, open a front door and grab whatever they can get their hands on. Simple little thing, but it's a really good habit too because then when you're at borders, if you're getting out paperwork or you're in the middle of a city and you're loading the fridge, it just now is a force of habit that, you know, I turn around, I put something in the fridge, then I swing the door closed with my elbow before I walk around to a different door. That way, much safer, much less chance of stuff getting stolen. The next one is a habit that I've picked up and it's become so strong that I continue to do this now in Canada. And I said in my last video, whenever you're buying gas, there's always an attendant who's going to pump it for you. So that means you kind of have five minutes to stand around and do nothing. Well, instead of standing around and doing nothing, I've developed a habit where I always open up the hood and I check the engine oil. And as well as checking the oil, I have a really good look around under the hood. I squeeze the radiator hoses, I spin the radiator fan, I give my batteries a shake, I have a look how much coolant is in the overflow bottle. I just do a good survey of everything under the hood. This really brings me peace of mind again, that everything is where it should be. There aren't any obvious oil leaks. I don't suddenly have way less coolant than I had last time I checked. All of those kinds of things, again, they're really going to help you identify a small problem before it turns into a major problem. And I have the 3.8 liter in my Jeep. This thing is a bit notorious for burning oil and mine's getting older now. So yes, it does burn a little bit of oil. So what that means is every time I buy gas, even here in Canada, I check the oil level and I do notice it go down like a fractional amount every time I check it. And that's good, that brings, brings peace of mind that I understand exactly what's going on. And I say, yes, that makes sense. And I know people who've had engine failures with this engine, they pretty much will tell you, yeah, I wasn't checking it regularly enough and it ran low on oil and then it threw a bearing. And I mean, you can't really blame the engine for throwing a bearing when it doesn't have enough oil in it. So for me, if I'm driving long distances, I'm driving up to Alaska or wherever else, really important thing, check the basics, make sure that it's not running low on oil. I mean, that's on me. If I drove this thing and it blew up, if I'd been checking the oil every single day and being diligent, well, I'd feel bad, but at least I wouldn't feel fully responsible. But if I hadn't looked under the hood for a month and it blew up because it had run low on oil, I mean, that's totally my fault, that's silly. So I can totally negate that just by checking everything under the hood every single time I buy gas. And yeah, in Canada here, people sometimes give me strange looks. I think it's not really common to do this with a modern vehicle, but it brings me so much peace of mind and so much happiness. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do this for the rest of my life, irrelevant of what vehicle I have. And then the final habit that I've developed, this one helps bring me a lot of sanity and it keeps all my gear safe. And that is to always put stuff away when you're not using it. And for me, that means putting it inside lock boxes. And so it's really tempting when you're at camp, if you're done reading your ebook or you got looked up something on your phone, it's really tempting just to sort of like toss it on the driver's seat and then go back to cooking dinner. And while that's tempting, as I said, stuff tends to disappear from time to time, which is annoying, but also it really messes with my sanity when I can't find something. So I'll spend 20 minutes tearing apart every storage cabinet I have trying to find my phone when in reality I threw it on the driver's seat and then it just sort of fell down behind the seat or beside it. So for me, putting stuff in its place, it brings a lot of sanity so I know where it is, 
but it also means stuff isn't going to disappear, i.e. get stolen, because you actually locked it away properly. And again, this is such a good habit to get into because it applies times 10 when you're at borders or when you're applying for visas or you've parked your car in the city or something. You'll be in such a habit before you get out to walk around the city, you'll be like, I should put everything in my pockets away in lock boxes. I should take the GPS off, put it in a lock box. Make sure the glove box is locked. Make sure the center console is locked. Oh, my laptop was charging overnight. I better make sure that's locked away. All of those kinds of habits put things out of sight, put things where people aren't going to look on the dashboard, say, gee, there's an iPhone charging cable. I'm willing to bet if this person has an iPhone charging cable, there's probably an iPhone floating around in there. That's going to give them incentive to break the window, start looking around for an iPhone. Put that charging cable out of sight, lock it up, hide it. Don't give anyone anything to look at. It's going to keep you a lot saner and it's going to really reduce the chances of stuff getting stolen. So those are five simple little tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years driving around the world. I hope you find them helpful and I'd really love your input and your ideas. Leave a comment down below. What kind of habits have you developed over the years? What do you think is really important to keeping your vehicle running well and keeping your gear well organized? Kind of daily habits to get into. I love learning from other people, so please do leave a comment down below. If the video has been helpful, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what else you'd like to know that I've learned from my years driving around the world. I really do want to help you guys get out and have your own adventure. So let me know whether it's about vehicles or route planning or money or safety, whatever topic is on your mind and you wonder how do I solve that problem if I'm going to go around the world, just let me know. Leave a comment. I'll add it to my list of video ideas and I am working through them and I really do bring out videos to help you guys. On that topic, I have to say thanks to my supporters on Patreon. They are bringing these videos to life. I did just buy some new camera gear, some new microphones. I'll be documenting my new expedition with a drone because people on Patreon have helped support me. So the lowest tier I offer is just $5 a month and you'll get behind the scenes info on my upcoming trip, the vehicle I'm building, and not just what modifications I'm making, but more importantly, why am I making them? What's the reasoning that goes into tire size, suspension choice, engine choice, transmission choice, all of these things, there's a lot of whys that go into it, and that's all the information that I'm giving my supporters. That's all over on Patreon right now, and every week now, I'm posting behind the scenes info, and I'm answering a lot of questions and getting a lot of info from people who know about the destination that I'm going to. I can learn from them, they can learn from me. It's really great, I'm really enjoying interacting with people over there on Patreon, where I do have the time and energy to reply to every single comment. So if that's interesting to you, there's a link down in the description. Head over there right now and check out what I've got going on on Patreon. But until then, thanks very much for watching again. Stay safe out there, and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.